Okay, so let's get started. So we are happy to have Yuya Tanizaki uh, from Kyoto, YITP. He's going to tell us about topological aspects of Cardi. Uh, I don't know how that might be. Rabinovich, yeah. Rabinovich yeah. Shimoda, please. Yeah, thank you very much for invitation to this interesting seminar series. So today I'm talking about my recent study with Masatsumi Honda, he's also at YITP, on some topological apps, aspects of lattice U1 gauge theory called Kali Rabinovich model. So let me tell uh, my motivation first. So my main motivation is to understand low energy YAMU's dynamics and its relation to this theta angle. So but Yamu theory is very just simple theory. It is just a non abelian gauge theory, and that's it. And it has a coupling constant, but this coupling constant is not a free parameter in quantum theory because of the dimensional transmutation. So this coupling changes the, uh, as a function of the energy scale, and it defines some strong scale called lambda. And in our universe, it is typically, we say it is around 200 MeV, strong interaction becomes very strong, and quarks are confined inside color singlet hadron because of this strong interaction. So this is a Yamil theory. And so far, Yamil theory has no free parameter because changing the coupling constant is just a rescaling of the energy scale. So in that sense, we, do not play, we cannot play with any change of the coupling. However, Yamil theory has another interesting parameter called the theta angle. So instead of the kinetic term, we have also dimension for operator, which is often called FF tilde. And the theta is a coefficient in front of this. So why this term is interesting? First of all, this term is topological, or it's a, just a total derivative term. So in that sense, if we so, try to write down the classical equation of motion by variational principle, you just get this. So there is no appearance of theta because theta, so that is the, what we mean by theta is a topological term. But although this is a total derivative term, in pass integral, we are told that we have to sum up all possible configuration of gauge field. And in that case, quantum mechanically, this classically meaningless parameter theta gives very interesting non-trivial dynamics because this total derivative term counts a number of what is called instanton in the space time. So if you call space-time M4, and if you integrate over this total derivative term FF tilde, then you will get some integer N. And uh, this number of, and uh, since you have to sum up all possible configuration, you have to sum up such instant number. And so the angle may affect so low energy dynamics through this quantum process. And in order to understand what this theta angle affects the low, how this theta angle affects the low energy dynamics, it is very useful to take the large n Toffuft limit. And this large n limit is a very useful limit to understand the qualitative behavior of the low energy SUN Yamil theory. So let me take this limit. So this limit is just a limit taking n inside SUN going to infinity while fixing this Toffuft coupling uh, defined by, so Yamil coupling square times n fixed. So in this rescaled, in this scaling limit, so we can write down the path integral like this. So we can pull this n in front of all the action and because I rescale the coupling into the language of two-fifth coupling, you get just some Yamil's kinetic term without any scaling, and the theta angle is rescaled like this. And the reason why this large n limit is useful is this n behaves like one over h bar in quantum mechanics. So in semi-classical quantum mechanics, we have one over h bar in front of the action or pass integral, and when this h bar is small, in other words, one over h bar is large, 
then semi-classical approximation gives a very nice approximation. And we understand, we can understand the quantum mechanics from the viewpoint of some cro small correction to the classical mechanics. So that the smallness of H bar is quite useful. And in the same way, so we have N in front of the Yamil's action. So this means that this N behaves as one over H bar. And in some sense, large N limit behaves like a classical limit of the Yamil theory. So in that sense, this is a useful limit to understand the qualitative behavior of Yamil theory. And another important thing this scaling limit tells us that in this large N limit, theta angle is uh, naturally defined as theta over N. So theta over N is more natural variable than theta itself. So this is a very important point as I will mention in the next page. So since theta over N is a natural parameter in large N limit, whatever theta is, so theta is typically zero, some quantity inside zero or two pi. So it's an order one variable, that, but that means that theta over N in the large N limit is quite small. So you can write down the uh, ground state energy as a function of theta it can be written in this way. So it's a natural function of theta over N. And here N squared coming, so there is an overall N squared factor because there is a, so there are N squared number of gluons. And so although they are strongly interacting, so I cannot describe how it behaves, but basically number, so ground state energy should be proportional to that degree of freedom. So you should have N squared in front. So this is a laugh, so, this describes how ground state energy should behave in the large N limit in terms of a theta angle. And then, so since theta over N is quite small, you can naturally expect that you can perform a Taylor expansion of this some universal function of N, F in, in terms of theta over N. And so you will get like this. So there is some constant and a constant part which is independent of theta, but uh, since uh, uh, ground, so shift of the ground state energy is, can be, is not physical, so you can forget about this. But so what is important is, so there is a theta squared, the, so ground state energy behaves as just a quadratic function of theta and without any dependence. And any higher order correction is suppressed in terms of one over N squared. So inside the natural range of theta zero to two pi, higher order correction is completely negligible in the large N limit. And this coefficient F double prime is called topological susceptibility and it is typically order of lambda to the four where lambda is the strong scale. And so I want to mention that, so this is a large N expectation, but uh, so this has some disease. So ground state energy must be two pi periodic because uh, so, so in, in, in this ex explanation, instant number is always N. So, so theta angle dependence always appears in the passing integral of E to the I theta N. And since N is integer, theta two of two pi should be identical to theta equals zero. So any quantity like ground state energy must be C pi, so, uh, two pi periodic in terms of theta. But this quadratic expression does not respect this property. So what's happening? So, so there is a key idea introduced by Witten is that, so although local behavior is just this quadratic behavior, so, but we have to reproduce this two pi periodicity. So in order to do this, so single ground state is, is incompatible with these two constraints. So you have to have multi branch structure for the ground state energy. So there is some integer level K and there are infinitely many ground state behaves as a quadratic, so quadratic function of theta, but the location of the origin of theta can be theta equal zero or theta equal two pi. So in order to reproduce this, you have to take this kind of multi-branch fun function for the ground state energy.
So let, let me give us schematic behavior. So this is a zeroth branch, which we originally discussed in the large energy discussion. But this is not two pi periodic. So you have to shift this quadratic by two pi and you have to prepare another ground state. And there are infinitely many things like this. Then you get a nice consistency between large N analysis and two pi periodicity. And if we believe this scenario, it tells us that so as a, a function of theta, you have to encounter a first order transition at theta equal pi, because you have to, so first you live in this blue branch, but at theta equal pi, in order to go back to original ground state energy, you have to jump to another branch, which is nothing but the first order phase transition. And only after this first order phase transition, you can go back to the original ground state energy at theta equal to pi. And uh, so I, I did not mention, but uh, there is a CP symmetry at theta equal pi, which roughly is saying that there is a axis. Uh, so there is a symmetry uh, flipping the axis at theta equal pi. So this CP symmetry at theta equal pi is spontaneously broken. And this first order phase transition is caused by this CP, uh, spontaneously broken CP symmetry. So this is uh, what we know about large and Yamil theory. And it is very uh, clear discussion. So very beautiful discussion, but uh, it's very mathematical and we do not still know what is the physics behind causing this kind of multi-branch structure or phase transition at theta equal pi. So, so I wanted to understand this point and in order to do this, so, so Yamu theory is still too difficult to theory to get that insight. So instead, I would like to discuss more easy, yeah, uh, some toy model called Cardi Rabino bit model, which gives very nice intuition behind this kind of structure. So let me go move on could to the. Ex yes. Uh, could, could you go back to the definition of the p function? There was another function f. Uh, here. What is this in f? So f is some an independent function. So so I, I'm just saying that so if you do this pass integral and ground state energy is log of this one uh, minus log of this one, and so. So by looking at this expression, you perform one over n expansion. And what we have is, so, so n is all, overall n is just a, a inverse of the Planck constant in classical, semi-classical mechanics. And I'm performing a perturbation in terms of theta over n. And, and then, so that perturbative expansion gives some function of theta over n. And I formally write down that, uh, an independent function as f. And how do you know there's no linear term in, in theta? Ah, there is an, ah, so yeah, there is no linear term in theta because uh, so CP symmetry flipped the sign of theta and uh, at theta equals zero, so, so we have a buffer Witten theorem saying that such kind of symmetry is unbroken. So, so because of that symmetry flipping theta to minus theta, ground state energy, it should be a function of theta squared. I see, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much for questions. Okay, then let's move on to the cardi rabinovitz model. So cardi rabinovitz model tells us a uh, so more intuitive explanation about confinement and its theta dynamics. And uh, what is an uh, intuitive explanation of uh, so what is the most familiar or intuitive explanation of the confinement? So according to Namb, Mandel, Mandelstam, and Tofut, they are claiming, so suggesting that confinement should, seems to be caused by some condensation of magnetic particle. So confinement is, what, the, what is confinement? Confinement is if you put, so probe electric charge and probe electric anti-charge, then if you try to separate them, then so then, so there is a linear potential between them. So, so however they are separated, there is a constant force uh, attracting 
with each other. So this is a, some characterization of the confinement. And so in order to realize this scenario, what we have is, so the, this electric charge emits some Coulomb electric field, but you have to some collimate them and then there should be a linear constant flux. Then according to the Gauss law, in this flux, however, they are separated at each cross section, there should be a constant energy flux. And this is nothing but the constant uh, forces attracting each other. So, so in order to do this, so, so what they propose is if there are many magnetic particles and they are condensing in vacuum, then so electric flux uh, emitted from uh, test electric charge should be collimated because of the dual minus one effect. So this is the so most simplest scenario for explaining confinement. So in order to do this, so what we have is so so there are many gluons which so in Yamu theory there are many gluons which have electric charge. And we should also have many magnetic monopoles. And, but unfortunately, currently, at least in, within the U1 gauge theory, it's quite difficult to write down a local Lagrangian formulation to treat such both electric and magnetic excitation with very small masses. So currently, we do not know how to write down such electric and magnetic excitation simultaneously. So what Kadi and Rabinovich tried is to construct some lattice model which may or may not come out of local nice field theory, but uh, they constructed such a model at least with a solid lattice regularized theory, and they try to include the theta term to understand the behavior, what I explained in the motivation part. So le let me first explain what is the Kadi Rabinovich model. And I'm right, so they, although they originally proposed a lattice model, for convenience of the explanation, here I'm writing down some continuum analog of it. So Cardi Rabinovich model is just a, some U1 gauge theory is with theta angle. So here is a, so A, so small a is a U1 gauge field. So here is a Maxwell term. And this is a theta angle for the Maxwell theory. And the important part is how matter uh, interacts. And as I say, I do not know how to write down the Lagrangian that have both electric and magnetic matters. So what basically what they try is to use a world line formalism. So they try to explain the propagation of electric matter as a closed Wilson loop and the propagation of magnetic matter as a closed Toffuft loop or defect operator. And they consider all possible summation of such closed word lines of Wilson and Toffuft loops like this. So, so this N mu and M mu basically uh, specify what, the, what is a closed word line of N corresponds to that of electric matter and M corresponds to that of magnetic matter. And although I, we do not know what is a correct, uh, uh, cor correct Boltzmann weight that comes out of local nice field theory, but, uh, but uh, at, at least at the formal level, if we believe that such kind of theory emerges out of some low, uh, uh, some kind of strong interacting field theory like Yamu theory, so it's just a model that mimics the interaction with, for the theory bo with both electronic and magnetic matters. Uh, I have and, one question. Yes. So Wilson loop has some label uh, like a charge N. Yes, yes. So this N appear in the even the up uh, the action in front uh, of here, the Ah, yeah, yeah, right. Same? Yeah, this N and this N is the same. So it's uh, some okay. charge N. Okay, but, but the fruit loop is, doesn't have charge, uh, like uh, yeah, so minimal charge? 
Yeah, it's minimally charged. Okay. So it is saying that so electric charge appears only if that electric charge is n times some integer, but magnetic charge can be appear okay. for arbitrary yes. integers. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Got it. Thanks. Yeah, and uh, this n front in terms of uh, yeah in front of theta is very yeah important for technical purpose. So load of sheet angle of this model is the Witten effect. So at finite theta, so Witten effect tells us that so oh, even if you start for purely magnetic matter, if you turn on theta, then that magnetic charge, magnetic particle also acquires some electric charge proportional to theta. So what so pictorially what we have is originally we have this lattice of electric and magnetic charge. But if you turn on theta, this lattice becomes oblique or distorted like this. So this dashed line is the original per perpendicular directions. And uh, so, so because of the, uh, so if you turn on theta angle, this so magnetic matter acquires electric charge like this way. So if I label this kind, these types of particle N and M, so, so N is, so n is this level of the integer characterizing the electric axis, and m is uh, some integer characterizing the, this magnetic axis. Then what is the uh, correct electro and magnetic charges with seat angle? And the answer is this. So magnetic charge is not affected by theta, but electric charge is uh, shifted by theta over to by times m. And I'm multiplying n in front for the dynamical particle just because of the same reason here. So here I say that only charge n electric matter, so charge large n electric matter appears in the as a dynamical excitation. So in order to clarify that point, I label only the dynamical particle uh, denoted by blue blobs. And the black one it can be inserted as a test particle, but they are not dynamical. And if I label the dynamical particle as a two integer, for example, this one is one zero, this one is one one, and this one is zero one, then total elect so electric charge at finite theta takes this kind of form. And in order to take this n in front of the Witten effect, so n in front of the theta term was important, but, but that's a small technical aspect. And so, so here now we understand the, what, what, what are the dynamical excitation for Cardi Rabinovich model. So next question is what would be the phase diagram of this model? And we can estimate so we can guess that there are very rich phase diagram. So because, so assume that there is a particle, dynamical particle labeled by NM, and let's try to judge if that particle can condense. And, and what, what, what would be the free energy if such particle is, shows a condensation? So, so we can estimate such free energy like this. So it would be a short range Coulomb interaction that is uh, the, that, that, would, that is responsible for the free energy of such condensed state. So electric Coulomb energy is just an electric coupling square times electric charge square. And in addition, there are magnetic excite. So since so it also has a magnetic charge, so there should be a magnetic coupling square to pi over g square, which, which comes out of a direct quantization condition. And m, m square, m is just magnetic charge. And substituting the expression of E and M, you get this kind of some uh, complicated expression for free energy with condensation of type small n and small m. And since this is a some complicated function of n and m, so depending on some coupling constant, g square and theta angle, so we may naively expect that there could be various type of phase transition from, for example, particle type condensation zero one to other particle type condensation minus one one, for example. And indeed, if you try to do it, if, if you just do some, so 
the, yeah, yeah, minimization of this F free energy in terms of N and M, you will see that this indeed happens. So what, what is happening is, so vertical axis is a coupling and uh, uh, horizontal axis is a theta. And at small coupling, what is preferred is a Higgs condensation or usual electric charge condensation. So at low energy, there is a Higgs phase. But if you go to a larger coupling, what is happening is, so at large coupling, electric charge, so electric energy becomes more larger and larger, but magnetic energy becomes smaller and smaller. So, con so compared with the electric condensation costing this electric Coulomb energy, it's better to cost the magnetic Coulomb energy to in terms of the minimization of the free energy. So instead of the electric charge condensation at large coupling, magnetic condensation is preferred, which causes a confinement. And if you try to play game with theta, there are many other phases. So there is another confinement phase caused by di called the dion, which is a type, a particle type minus one one. And there is a more exotic phase, what is called oblique confinement, which is a condensation of that particle type minus one two. I will talk about this oblique confinement in more detail later, but uh, what I wanted to tell is uh, this model enjoys a very rich phase diagram. Ah, I, and, have a, I have one question, sorry, can yeah. you go back? What is gamma? Ah, In this gamma? gamma is, so if you do more uh, careful analysis, they, so, so in certain situations, there is a chance that no condensation is appears. So in this region gamma, there is no condensation of charged particle. And what is uh, resulting low energy physics is a Coulomb phase. So there is a massless photon. So okay. this uh, gray region gamma is a Coulomb phase with massless, part massless vector particle excitations. But, but how, how did you find there is such a... Ah, uh, so, so for, for, for that one, well, we need a uh, more careful analysis, but so what is really doing is this mm -hmm. free energy is uh, uh, basically gives a excitation of some loop excitation. And mm -hmm. that kind of loop has a possible deformation. So there is uh, some entropy proportional to L. And mm -hmm. if entropy wins that energy, that particle can condense. So if that this, energy is small enough compared with the uh, uh, entropy of the loop, mm -hmm. there is a bunch of uh, excitation and the device pre screening is expected. But if this one cannot win the entropy, then what is uh, more likely is such particle cannot uh, yeah, pop up from the vacuum. So then in that case, uh, there is no screening due to charged excitation, then you will get Coulomb phase. So this mm -hmm. is a very heuristic. Extra argument out of the particle. Okay, thank you. And uh, another thing, so another interesting point of this Kadi Rabinovich model is the modular invariance of the phase diagram. So let me try to introduce a complex expression for the coupling. So real part is just a theta angle, and imaginary part is one over coupling sticks, so electric coupling squared instead of coupling squared. So, so if you introduce this kind of holomorphic coupling, so previous expression F free energy of a particle time MM has a very nice expression like this. And it turns out that it is invariant under electromagnetic duality and so S transformation and T transformation, where S transformation is given by basically tau to minus tau inverse which is basically exchanging strong coupling region to weak coupling region. And if you perform this operation with this delabeling of the particle, so basically exchanging the electric and magnetic charges up to some small size difference, then this, this, this F and M is invariant. And this tau to tau plus one, this is basically shifting theta to theta plus two pi. And under this operation, Again, with effect appears. So if you have a magnetic charge excitation, then you have to shift the electric charge by that amount of the magnetic charge. And then again, this expression is invariant. 
So this modular invariance of the free energy tells us that so it's better to draw phase diagram in terms of theta and one over coupling square instead of coupling squared as I did in the previous stage. So if you write this way, there is a very echidotic phase diagram. So this blue line is each phase transition. This region is Higgs phase. This region is confined phase. And this is what I call the oblique confinement phase. But there are many, many, infinitely many echidotic oblique confinement phases. And because of the modular invariance of the free energy, so all phase transition lines are related by S or T transformation. And there are infinitely many uh, possible echidotic phases. So this Kali Rabinovich model enjoys a very, very rich phase diagram. So although, yeah, so what I want to explain is, so this Kadi Rabinovich model enjoys a very rich phase diagram. And, but to some extent, it may mimic some low energy dynamics of the young Mill theory. So understanding these exotic phases from the viewpoint of topology or anomaly or recent symmetry protected topological phase, then it may give some further insight of the young Mill theory. So from this motivation, what I will do from now on, we'll study anomaly of this Kadi Rabinovich model and try to do anomaly matching to constrain phase diagram or consist check the consistency of the phase diagram. And we will want to get a more detailed insight of how we can match recent anomaly matching. So this is I will, what I will do from now on. So let's try to study the topological aspects of the Kadi Rabinovich, Rabinovich model using anomaly matching. So, so, so since I will heavily use anomaly matching, let me give a very quick explanation of the, um, what the anomaly matching is. So assume that uh, we are interested in some quantum field theory with some global symmetry G. And we want to know whether this G is spontaneously broken or there, there may be, or there should be some massless excitation charge under G. And in order to get such data, so first anomaly is a very important, it provides a very important data for studying such a possibility. So what I will do is, so first we try to introduce a background gauge field for this global symmetry G and compute the partition function with this, including this background. And so, and after that, so you can ask whether this gauged partition function or a partition function with a background gauge field is invariant under the background gauge transformation. So this is a background gauge trans transformation with, and this is a partition function. And you want to compare this partition function with the original partition function. Because basically gauge transformation is just a shift of the uh, so location of the symmetry defect. Naturally speaking, so very naively speaking, this should be equal. But sometimes in certain theories, this naive expectation is wrong and you will get some extra phase. So, and this is called topless anomaly. So if you get, so what, so let me summarize. So into, introduce background gauge field and perform background gauge transformation. If partition function acquires the phase characterized by background gauge field and its gauge parameter, then that is a Tofuft anomaly. And the Tofuft anomaly matching says that this Tofuft anomaly is renormalization group invariance. So once you compute this anomaly at the ultraviolet scale or ultraviolet degrees of freedom, then so what you will do is low energy physics is strongly coupled. So only you can do is you would guess what would be the low energy degree of freedom. And this anomaly matching tells you that, so that low energy degrees, so you have to be able to reproduce that, low, that same anomaly using that low energy degrees of freedom. If it was impossible, that your proposal for the low energy theory is wrong. So this, in, in that way, Tofuft anomaly matching tells us a nice constraint for the low energy physics. So in order to uh, use this technique, we have to uh, 
so we, we have to understand what is the symmetry of the Cardi Rabinovich model in more details. So Cardi Rabinovich model has first GN one form symmetry. So let me explain. So, F, so, uh, so in our definition of the Cardi Rabinovich model, only Wilson loop to the nth power appears in the path integral. That means that only dynamical electric excitation is, uh, has a charge n times some integer. So in such situation, if you put a test particle with charge one, then because of the pop-up of dynamical excitation from the vacuum, so this may charge one may become one plus n, n or one plus two n, etc. But still in modulo n, that test charge is well defined. So you can identify test, test, so electric charge of test particle in modulo n. And in order to formulate this, so what we are saying is you have some symmetry operation changing Wilson loop to the uh, rotating its phase to the nth power of unity. So this is what is called the GN1 form symmetry because this symmetry operation acts on the line operator instead of any yeah, although it does not change any local operators. And another important symmetry of this model for our purpose is the CP symmetry. So CP symmetry basically changing the uh, sign of the topological term FF tilde, which effectively flips the theta to minus theta. So CP is not a good symmetry for generic values of theta, but the theta is a two pi periodic variable so although theta equals zero is a trivial CP symmetric point, but there is another non-trivial CP symmetric point, point, theta equal pi. Because theta equal pi goes to theta equal minus pi, but because of the two pi periodicity, it is identical with theta equal pi. So it's a good symmetry. And so interestingly, this model has a anomaly between G and one form symmetry and CP symmetry at theta equal pi. And uh, I want to emphasize that this anomaly is exactly the, so, so pure Yamil theory, pure SU and Yamil theory at theta equal pi has exactly the same anomaly. So studying, of the, stud, studying the Cardi Rabinovich model from the viewpoint of this topological aspect may give some hints for the pure Yamil theory. So let me explain how we get this mixed topos anomaly. So in order to do this, what we do is, so basically what we will do is regard this one form symmetry like a vector like symmetry and this CP symmetry like an axial symmetry and gauging this GN one form symmetry, we will defect the violation of CP, which CP symmetry. So this is exactly what we did for the chiral anomaly. So when we want to detect chiral anomaly, you introduce a vector like gauge field and look at the violation of the axial rotation. So we will, let, let's do the same thing. So here, in order to introduce a background gauge field for the one form symmetry, what we need is a two form gauge field. So we introduce a GN two form gauge field B and introduce the minimal coupling, introduce a coupling by the minimal coupling procedure and evaluate the partition function at final theta with that background gauge field. And with this background gauge field, you can check that theta angle periodicity is no longer two pi. So if you perform, so, so if, if you do not have this B field, of course theta is two pi periodic because instanton is quantized in the integer unit, but uh, with the existence of this B field, that integer quantization no longer holds. And if you perform this theta to theta plus two pi, then you want to compare this partition function with the original partition function. But then you will get some extra phase, which is given by this topological action. And this topological action is a, uh, uh, usually given by two pi over n times integer. So, so, so you will get non-trivial GN phase in front of the partition function, which is nothing but a kind of anomaly. Indeed, for even n, if you perform the CP transformation at theta equal pi, you will get 
So the theta of a pi goes to the theta of minus pi. And using this identity, you want to uh, relate this g of theta minus pi to g of theta plus pi. But then you will get extra g and phase in front. And uh, as I said, this is, so there are exactly the same anomaly also in PIMU's theory at theta equal pi. So since we found the anomaly, so you have to check various possibilities. So, so we can now check whether various phases obtained in the cardi davidovich model satisfy the anomaly matching constraint or not. And uh, le let me, Let's try. So there are, so first there are relatively easy or familiar phases, which are Higgs phase or confinement phases. And in Higgs phase, what is happening is con there are condensation of the electric charge. So if you put electric Wilson loop, there is a device screening. So there is no area law. So instead, Wilson loop obeys a perimeter law. So th that is basically saying that, so loop, loop operator charged under one form symmetry can be made larger and larger without decaying its expectation value. So that is nothing but the analog of the off-diagonal long range order for the usual symmetry. In other words, the N one form symmetry is spontaneously broken. And since, so in the, so low energy phase, this GN form symmetry no longer realized by the vacuum. So you no longer have, you can no longer have some symmetry detecting anomaly. So, so this clearly tells us that your anomaly matching is clearly satisfied by breaking that Toffus anomaly symmetry to its anomaly free subgroup. Okay, so, so familiar Higgs phase is fine, so at fine, at any theta, Wilson loop obeys area row, uh, perimeter row, and one form symmetry is spontaneously broken, and uh, there is no anomaly, we only with CP, so, so anomaly matching is satisfied. So next thing is confinement phase. So in the case of confinement phase, what is happening is, uh, so let's try to look at this. So these two are confinement phase, and here is theta equal pi, and there are two vacua. And two vacua exist because G two CP symmetry is spontaneously broken. So it is exactly what we expected in the large and Yamu theory. So in the confined phase, as I said, CP is spontaneously broken. And in the language of monopole, there are two possible condensation co causing confinement. One of them is monopole condensation which is a condensation of particle type Nm equals zero one. So there are no electric charge at theta equal zero and uh, still you have a magnetic charge. But uh, so same kind of confinement can be caused by dion condensation, which is electric charge minus one and magnetic charge one. And it turns out that so these two particle condensation give the same free energy at theta equal pi. So these two have the same energy, so they are related by CP symmetry. So, so since there are two confining vacuum at theta equal pi with the same free energy, so it's nothing but a uh, characterization of the spontaneous CP, CP breaking. And so from this heuristic viewpoint, you, so we only say that there are particle condensation so there are different particle condensations, but uh, in the original language, so these two different condensations cannot be characterized by Randall type order parameter because there is no order parameter, local order parameter detecting this N. So why still we have good phase transition between them? So answer is given by this uh, analysis of the anomaly. So thanks to the anomaly, so what is happening is, so if you start for the, some monopole condensation vacuum, you are, you are, and assume that your partition function is normalized to one, then perform CP transformation and goes to dion vacuum, dion condensation vacuum. And by anomaly relation, you should get extra GN phase like this. 
So this tells you that, so if you say that this monopole is really trivial, then your dion condensation is non-trivial as SPT phase. So this tells us that, so although there is no Landau type characterization between monopole condensation and dion condensation, there is a difference as a symmetry protected topological order. And uh, yeah, there sh then it, it, it clearly tells us that there should be a quantum phase transition. So th there, there is no way to continuously deform monopole condensation to dion condensation, thanks to this anomaly. Yeah, thanks to this kind of technique of the background gauge field for one form symmetry. So, so, so this is the explanation of how Higgs and confinement phases re realizes the anomaly matching constraint. But uh, still, we still have non-trivial condensation region here. And uh, let me explain this oblique confinement phase. So oblique confinement at theta equal pi is, seems to be realized at really, really strongly electric coupling regime. And what is it? It is caused by some condensation of the particle type and m equal minus one and two. So, so original electric charge is minus one and the magnetic charge is two. So some echidotic condensation. So why such an echidotic one is preferred? So to, do, to see it, let me again write down this free energy expression. And there is, this is a electric Coulomb energy, magnetic Coulomb energy. And in the really, really strong coupling, what you want to do is to minimize this free energy is to make this part equal to zero. And you can notice that at theta equal pi, this becomes one half. So if you substitute m equal two, then putting m equal minus one, this is zero. So although you have to pay force power, force, force times larger magnetic energy cost, but the magnetic energy is fine because it's very small. It's, it's one over g squared. But, but by costing some magnetic energy, you can gain a huge energy out of the electric Coulomb energy. So this kind of such exotic condensation can be preferred in the, at least in the Cardi Rabinovich model. And this oblique confinement, so what is this oblique confinement? So what is a low energy characterization of this oblique confinement phase? And so, so when particle nm equal minus one and two is condensing, so let's ask what is the Wilson line obeying the perimeter law? So such perimeter law is possible only if that test particle has a mutually local charge with, the con with that of condensing particle. And when n is even, if you have consider Wilson loop to the n over to the power of n over two, then mutual locality becomes n over two times two. So it is n, so in modulo n, it becomes zero. So it becomes mutually local. So, in, so that is suggesting that Wilson loop to the n of power n over two or test particle with charge n over two obeys perimeter law. While other particle is not mutually local, so all other particles should obey area law. So what, 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 what does it mean? So this means that, so there is a symmetry breaking Zn to G, Gn over two. So this N over two suggesting that only this N over two charged Wilson line obeys perimeter law. And uh, so this is uh, what uh, oblique, so, so free energy argument of the oblique confinement suggests. So this is a low energy effective theory obtained by uh, or suggested by Cardi Rabinovich model. So let's check whether this symmetry break pattern is really anomaly free or satisfies anomaly matching condition. So let's check this anomaly matching for oblique confinement phase. In order to see this, so, so you have to see that Gn over two one form symmetry and Cp is anomaly free. So let's try to replace this B field originally. So Gn two form gauge field to the Gn over two, two form gauge field, another thing, B prime. Then doing the CP transformation, you will get this kind of phase. And it turns out that, that this phase is still non-trivial for N 
equal four or larger. So it may, at first sight, it may suggest that annual matching is not still satisfied. But uh, we are not doing our best yet because, uh, so we have to check whether anomaly is present after adding appropriate local counter term or adding all possible local counter terms. And uh, indeed, there is a nice local counter term like this. And if you do this and perform CP transformation, you will find that this anomaly phase completely disappear. So theory becomes CP symmetric. So oblique confinement phase is a good scenario satisfying the anomaly matching condition. And I want to emphasize that, so in the Higgs phase, so Higgs phase was also fine. So it is also another scenario satisfying the anomaly matching condition by breaking one form symmetry. But in that case, this GN1 is completely broken. But in this oblique confinement phase, it's more subtle symmetry breaking. GN goes to GN over two. So this is a minimal one of the, so oblique confinement phase is one of, turns out to be a minimal, so interesting minimal scenario satisfying the anomaly matching condition. Okay, so this is a topological aspects of, of the oblique confinement phase. So I will. I have one question. So what, I what if n is good odd? So when n is odd, the oblique confinement phase is, uh, turns out to be trivial phase. But so it turns out that so, so, so in the case of confinement phase, you have uh, so one trivial SPT phase and another non-trivial SPT phase. And when n is odd, it turns out that, that this oblique confinement phase is also different non-trivial SPT phase, and they should be separated from this one and this one. So it, it again explains that this separation of the phase transition should exist, or even for n equal odd. Okay. Um, I still don't understand this. How this counter term cancel with this the upper one to be? Uh, so, so if I perform uh -huh. CP transformation for this one, uh -huh. then for from this one you will get this phase, but okay. this counter term also flip the sign under CP transformation. So okay. this phase and this so changes are uh, cancels out, and so and it go back to G tilde of pi after CP transformation. Okay, so but, yeah, so, but it seems like the factor of two is different. Well, uh, am I missing something? Uh, so, so, so it becomes plus, so, uh -huh. so, so shift of level. So, so, so in order to rewrite this in terms of G tilde, uh -huh. so this plus should be written in terms of minus, plus, minus one plus two, and oh, that two cancels see, with this two. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay, so l let me quickly talk about uh, more, more on duality of the Kadi Rabinovich model. So, Sorry, uh, <clears throat> will there be the similar phenomena in pure yamions? Uh, so, yeah, yeah. To be honest, it's not known, but uh, so, for example, if you look at the uh, Tofutu's paper in 81, so mm -hmm. there is a suggest, so this oblique confinement phase is originally suggested for the SU2 Yamil theory at theta equal pi by taking maximal Abelian gauge of pure Yamil theory. So little, so, so it may be possible also, so, uh, so let's see. Yeah, yeah, so, so short answer is no one knows, but uh, this kind of phase uh, free energy argument is only really, uh, yeah, believable only in the large end limit. So when n is small, like two, maybe different scenario may be possible. So there may be a, another branch for SU2 for the oblique confinement phase. And if this is G2 topological order, it again satisfies anomaly matching. But, but no one knows. Yeah, it, it, it's, I, I can only say that it's a possible scenario. I see, thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay, so, so let me talk about more on duality. So free energy argument suggests that kadi rabinovich model satisfies this SN duality under SN-T transformation. And indeed, 
uh, local dynamics such as local free energy density satisfies this invariance, even if, yeah, I, I only write down very schematical free energy expression, but if you really write down the effective action more seriously, it turns out that, that this is really a good self-dual transformation for the effective action. However, globally, there is a still a problem. So S is an electromagnetic duality, so exchanging electric charge and magnetic charge. But the original Cartier-Rapidon-Dipitch model has one form symmetry for the electric charge, but magnetic so there is no magnetic version of the one form symmetry. So under S transformation, so basically Wilson loop should be mapped to the Tofuft loop, but there is no good fractionally charged Tofuft loop, at least in a, in the sense of the genuine line operator. So S transformation is a little bit uh, problematic, at least if you want to realize it as a self-duality of the theory. So although local dynamics is good, is nicely invariant under S transformation, if you look at more globally, there is certain difference. So, so S transformation should map to the another theory with the identical local dynamics instead of the self-duality. So, so, so I want to construct a nice SL2G self-dual theory starting from Cardi Rabinovich model because the Cardi Rabinovich model already satisfy local self-duality. So changing a little bit may, may give a good SL2G self-duality of the theory. And this is indeed possible. So from the previous expression, what was problematic is the absence of non-trivial magnetic one-form symmetry. So if electric one-form symmetry and magnetic one-form symmetry are identical group, the, the previous issue no longer occurs. So, and it turns out that, so I, I omit the steps, but uh, it turns out that if you start from charge n equal m squared Cardi Rabinovich model and gauging gm one form subgroup of gm squared electric one form symmetry, then it turns out that uh, you will get these electromagnetic one form symmetries without breaking uh, local self-duality. And it turns out that that theory and completely enjoys SL2G self-duality. And uh, this self-duality, so what, why do we care about self-duality? Because uh, self-duality sometimes gives an enhancement of the global symmetry. So if you, for example, you are holomorphic coupling tau is a non-trivial fixed point inside that certain subgroup of SL2G, then its subgroup, stabilizer subgroup, gives an extra symmetry. For example, if tau equal i here, then under S transformation, it flips at tau equal i. So tau equal i goes to minus one over tau, it's again equals i. So this S transformation gives a G4 symmetry instead of the self-duality of this theory at this special coupling. Another thing is, Another interesting point is E of the pi i divided by three. So it's this point. At this point, this point turns out to be a fixed point of S times the T inverse transformation, which forms a G6 transformation. So very roughly, it is giving the 120 degree rotation around this point. And this, this 120 degree rotation turns out to be very interesting because that operation has an anomaly with the gravity background. So it has been known thanks to the Witten and the Ferrinde in 95 that Maxwell partition function is a modular form instead of the modular invariant function. So if you do T transformation, Maxwell partition function does not change, at least under a specific regularization. And in the same specific regularization, if you perform tau as S transformation, there is some extra factor in terms of tau and the tau bar in, in front of the Maxwell partition function. And this exponent is characterized by Euler number and also sigma, uh, which is called the signature of the spin form manifold. And uh, in terms of the Riemann curvature, you can write down a, 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 yeah integral form of this for the spin uh, signature. So, 
So anyway, there may be a non-trivial transformation out of the, at least in view of the Maxwell theory. And since we obtain a SL2G self-dual model, so we can, so it's natural to expect that we obtain our theory by some continuous deformation of the Maxwell theory by adding infinitely heavy electric and magnetic particle and making them making their masses lighter and lighter without breaking SL2G invariance. Yeah, it, it's quite non-trivial if that is really possible, but uh, believing that then this anomaly cannot change under the continuous deformation, then anomaly obtained out of this modular, in modular form property should be exist also for the Cardi Rabinovich model. So I put this assumption, but under this assumption, what, what, what we have is if you perform G6 or 120 degree rotation at tau equal to pi i, uh, equal e to the pi i over three, then you will get extra factor, which can be computed by this modular form expression. And it is given by this and uh, so non, first non-trivial generator of this signature turns out to be some spin manifold called the K3 surface. But uh, yeah, details are not important. It, what is only important is for that, there is some spin model giving, that, giving the sigma to the minus 16. And this is a minimal non-trivial number of the signature. And substituting this minus 16 here, we get the order three non-trivial anomaly. So anomaly matching suggests that G6 ST inverse symmetry should be broken down to G2. So this explains that, so at this point, this 100 degree rotation is anomalous in, when we couple with gravity. So in order to break, uh, in order to match this anomaly by symmetry breaking, this 120 de degree rotational symmetry should be spontaneously broken and naturally explain triple degeneracy. So like sorry, that. sorry, students, so why, why G6 instead of G3? Uh, G, uh, so let, let's you, you, you said 120 degree rotation. Yeah, so, I, so, isn't that so it's really like, so if you consider S transformation and if you, to S transformation twice, uh -huh. tau goes to tau, but uh, uh -huh. since you get a weird factor minus, what uh -huh. we have is N and M goes to, if you perform S squared, okay, minus you get N a char charge factor. conjugation, you mean? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So it, it is, so, so similarly, yeah, I this is sure charge, charge conjugation. Okay, and charge, okay. assuming that charge conjugation is not spontaneous. Okay, so. and here, 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 I have one question. So, so you have only dependence on uh, the signature sigma. How about Euler characteristic? Yes. Uh, Euler character part completely cancels out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if what you do compute it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. At, at least if I substitute e to the pi i over three, that part cancels because, okay. because of this tau bar. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah, so, so this uh, another mixed gravitational way gives a consistent check or non trivial constraint on the conjectured phase diagram. So let, let me summarize. So I revisited the Kaji Rabinovich model from the topological viewpoint because it may give another hint for the low energy confining dynamics. And, and Kaji Rabinovich model is very enjoyable because it not only gives an inter, uh, intuitive explanation of various confinement phenomena, it also gives a nice, so it provides may, many playgrounds for various possible phases, which may or may not appear in all Avalian gauge theory, but, but still it gives very various possibilities. And, and especially we identify what is the oblique confinement phase, and oblique confinement is the G2 topological order associated with this one-form symmetry breaking. And it turns out that this one-form symmetry breaking is a minimal scenario satisfying anomaly matching. So it's, so, so it's minimal compared with the Higgs. Higgs, Higgs space. And uh, we also construct the SL2G self dual theory from the Cardi Rabinovich model because original Cardi Rabinovich model does not have magnetic counterpart of the one form symmetry. So, so by, by play, playing some mathematics, we constructed some SL2G self dual model out of Cardi Rabinovich. 
And uh, for that model, we find an interesting anomaly. It's a mixed anomaly between part of SL2G and gravitation. And uh, it gives another, const another interesting constraint on the phase diagram. Yeah, that's everything. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, any questions? I guess perhaps I, I missed this. Can you go one slide, please? Yep. Go back to one. Yeah, here, why you call this is mixed with gravi gravity? Or uh, because it is only detectable only if our base manifold or space type manifold as a very non trivial one, like K3. So it's some discrete part of the gravitation. Yeah, or, yeah. Or signature is coming out of this RHR, so it's a kind of the gravity part. Or, yeah, so uh, because curvature is important, I call it some mi mixture of gravity. Can you specify this Maxwell parting function? Where are you defining which man? Ah, so this Maxwell partition function is a really usual Maxwell, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you forget about this matter part and perform this path integral, it's a Maxwell partition function at tau, yeah. It's just f which star which, yeah. Ah, this, this part is f which star which, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I on, mean, a, on a general manifold. On, on a general manifold, okay. yes. On a general manifold, yes. Um, Yeah, but why you call this is a mixed anomaly in the usual sense? In a usual sense, uh, because uh, so gravity it itself is uh, non anomalous and the G6 ST inverse is also non anomalous. But if we try to perform both, there is an anomalous phase. So, in that sense, it's called mixed, mixed anomaly. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Any other questions? How, how much does, so, sorry, I, I, I still don't, uh, maybe I missed some point, but this Cardi Lavinia Beach model, um, is that, uh, how much does, is this model uh, different from this usual young males, appearing young males? Uh, so, yeah, so indeed dynamics are very different. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, for example, yeah, so for example, so I, I said that there is a possibility of the Coulomb phase mm -hmm. and in the Cardi Rabinovich model, this Coulomb, so, area of the Coulomb phase tends to be become larger and larger as L goes to larger. But in Yamil theory for SU and Yamil's uh, confinement phase is more preferred even at finite theta. So mm -hmm. yeah, so for example, large and behavior are completely different and, uh, and also even <laughs> if you perform maximal abelianization, mm -hmm. so there are various types of gluon excitation, and mm -hmm. there are many types of the monopole, so at least there are n minus one simple monopoles. But here in this model, only we have one type of monopole for any n. So in that sense, it may be very different, yeah. But, but uh, what, what is very similar is some topological property. So, so for example, if we look at the anomaly at theta equal pi, it is identical with that of the young mu theory. So from the, Topological viewpoint, or at least in view of that anomaly, they are very similar. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, so when you say young males, of course, no, no, not being young males, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, yeah, yeah. SU and young males. SU yes. and young Okay. Of course. I, okay. Sorry. I, I think I asked a stupid question. So, if it is Maxwell theory, like Abelian theory, there is no such a phase structure. Yeah, but uh, so this Cardi-Rabinomic model enjoy this kind of confinement because because they are the monopole type yeah, excitation yeah, yeah, by yeah, hand. Yeah, 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 yeah by yeah, hand. Yeah. Okay, I yeah, see. Yeah. I see. I see. I see. Okay, okay, okay. I understand. Okay. A any other questions? Okay. If not, let's thank the speaker again.
Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so I will leave the space for informal discussion. Uh, I just stop recording. And then if you have further questions to him, you can just stay here and ask him.